Hi. This is Olga Duchenko, a postdoc in the laboratory of Dr. Erez Lieberman Aden, and this is a tutorial video on how to use Juicebox assembly tools. In this video, we will reassemble a simulated genome from figure 2 of the accompanying paper, and the Juicebox assembly tools module facilitates de novo assembly of mammalian genomes with chromosome length scaffolds for under $1,000. We start off by launching the latest version of Juicebox. I have it here on the desktop, downloaded from the AdenLab.org assembly. Juicebox is an application created in our lab for visualizing HiC data. We open to open the assembly HiC file. Go to File, Open, Local, and here I navigate to Desktop where I have the file downloaded. So this opens a HiC assembly heat map, a contact matrix that indicates the frequency of contacts between any given pair of loci in the assembly. We can take advantage of the multiple marvelous features of Juicebox in order to zoom in on the data, adjust the view to our liking, we'll change the color range maybe a little bit, uh, change the normalization. I for one prefer looking at balanced data. Uh, now we need to order or to load the assembly file, which indicates how the heat map relates to the underlying assembly. Assembly, import map assembly. Navigate again to desktop. You will see that this action loads three layers of annotation visible in the lower right. From bottom to top, you will see green scaffold annotations. Uh, these are annotations that correspond to individual FASTA sequences in the draft assembly. Blue chromosome annotations. These demarcate the boundaries of chromosomes and represent FASTA sequences that would be concatenated in the output. And yellow added annotation layers just to hold intermediate stuff. So uh, you can hide annotation layers. Um, you can change their appearance in various ways. Um, I, for example, prefer to keep my annotations to the lower left in order so that they do not obscure the map. And overall, you can just use these buttons to adjust the view to your liking. So now that we have the assembly loaded, we can see that our preview assembly consists of two chromosomes. A one that comprises two scaffolds, one, two, and another one that is just a single scaffold. Notice a few problems with this assembly. First of all, the second chromosome does not display a bright band of elevated contact frequency along all of its diagonal. In particular, there is this point uh, where the lower left and the upper right quadrants are extremely depleted, reflecting the lack of physical proximity between sequences upstream and downstream from this point. Uh, a, as in misjoin. In order to fix the misjoin, let us select the problematic scaffold by holding shift and clicking on the scaffold. You will see a black and yellow highlight appear around the selected sequence. Once selected, move the mouse cursor towards the diagonal. Uh, you will see a scissor prompt appear. An accompanying yellow edit annotation will show the region that will be excised upon click. In order to better and more precisely flank the problematic sequence, let's zoom in. Uh, you can also use scroll to adjust the size of the uh, edit annotation. So once happy with your selection, click. Um, and uh, this action will split the selected scaffold in two, one, two. And there will also be a smaller third scaffold appearing, which flanks the misjoin itself that is moved to the end of the assembly and kept there for future reference. All right, so let's zoom out. Now that we have addressed the misjoin, uh, let us look at the other um, anomalous signal associated with this assembly. This consists of this vertical and a symmetric horizontal bow tie-ish motif uh, far away from the diagonal. Now the strong signal far away from the diagonal indicates that two sequences that are apart according to the assembly in fact should be in close proximity. So what we're talking about is a translocation and the points of this motif um, kind of uh, highlight the sequences involved. You can see that one of them is the 
a region associated with the misjoint that we have just corrected. Another one uh, it is, lies somewhere in between these two scaffolds in chromosome 1. In order to move the uh, sequence, uh, what we need to do is shift click to select. Um, and move the cons uh, cursor to the point of the desired insertion. Once in between consecutive scaffolds and outside of the selection, an error prompt will appear that indicates the position of possible insertion. It's discussed, we want to move in between these two scaffolds, so let's just click. Uh, immediately you will see that the scaffold is moved uh, and also the pixels on the heat map are rearranged in order to reflect the changes made to the underlying assembly. So the signal far away from the diagonal is no more. And I'm just going to do an undo and redo a few times to highlight the effect of the action. So command undo, command redo, command u, command r. You can see that the so, all right, um, the map now looks much better, but there is still some unusual signal present associated with the translocated region. So let's zoom in to see a bit better. You can see another type of bow tie motif here, this one sort of parallel to the diagonal. This motif suggests that the sequence on one end of the scaffold that we have just inserted um, it tends to be, seems to be in close physical proximity with the sequence immediately downstream from the insertion. Um, in addition to that, a sequence uh, downstream um, in the sequence that we've just inserted uh, is in close proximity with the sequence immediately upstream from the scaffold. So what this suggests is that uh, the sequence we've just put here needs to be reversed. So, in order to uh, fix this, select the sequence uh, and move the mouse to the corner of the selection. You will see a circular error prompt appear, one click, and the misassembly is corrected. All right, so now let's just zoom out to check the map and check that there are no other anomalous uh, contact signals remaining. The map seems all good. So we're ready to export. Assembly, export assembly, save a reviewed assembly file, which can be used uh, with accompanying command line tools in order to generate a final FASTA sequence. And we're all done. Thanks for watching and happy assembling.